I've been watching TV all day. I watch a lot of cable news. I know everything. I'll tell you everything you need to know. I'm about to save you a lot of time. Spend that time however you like. It's yours, and you're welcome. <laughs> Today was day two of the Democrats' three-day opening argument in the Senate. The senators, as you may have heard, are basically prisoners. They're not allowed to leave the chamber. <laughs> And they are only permitted to drink water or milk, which <laughs> I have to say, I find disgusting. I don't know, to me, there, there are a few things more revolting than an adult drinking milk. It's <laughs> gross. I don't like it. These are long days for the senators. Many of them are reported to be restless. They were standing at their desk, walking around. Rand Paul had a crossword puzzle. A few of them had fidget spinners, <laughs> for real. Three of them, I don't know where they got fidget spinners, maybe from 2017, but they had them. <laughs> The senators are required to stay in their seats for the whole eight hours. They're allowed limited beverages, limited snacks, and they only get brief opportunities to get up and stretch their legs. It's like a flight to New Zealand in there. <laughs> but for the most part, they appear to be paying attention. I mentioned this last night because, you know, the Senate is in control of the cameras, not the news media, so we have to rely on courtroom sketches to show us what's going on on the sides. And this, this is a sketch from today, yesterday. This is Senator Marco Rubio. <laughs> taking notes with a quill pen. <laughs> I think he may be taking the founding fathers thing too seriously. <laughs> he may show up in a wig tomorrow. House Democrats, led by Adam Schiff, went through a mountain of evidence today. Very compelling, very damning evidence. I challenge anyone who actually watched this today to argue they shouldn't hear from witnesses. It's nuts. They have everything. This is open and shut, which is a problem for Fox News because it is impossible for them to defend. So instead of even trying, Instead, they're going with the old, it's boring defense. When you watch this, it's boring. I think it's super boring. Because no one's going to watch the entire thing, because it is boring. It will make you fall asleep. They are boring people to death. This is really boring. <laughs> Monotonous, dull, boring. I fell asleep. I think the American people are really bored with this. We took Adderall tonight so we could keep awake. Boring politicians with bad haircuts. It's mind-numbingly dull. And it kicks off again today at 1 o'clock? Yes. Good luck staying awake. <laughs> no, no. Have these people watched any congressional hearing ever? They're all bored. Next week, watch the Rural Transportation Initiative hearing and get back to us on how boring this one was. <laughs> Democrats spent most of the day today debunking the various conspiracy theories manufactured by the president and his friends. And then on Saturday, the president's lawyers will get to work rebunking those that have been debunked. And in the meantime, the president himself is taking matters into his own little thumbs. He tweeted eight <laughs> times in 20 minutes this morning. I wish Trump's Twitter account worked like when you log into online banking, you can only do it three times before they lock you out. <laughs> Yesterday, he broke his all-time record for tweets with 142. According to Time Magazine, as of November, this is not even current, he, he tweeted more than 266,000 words since he's been president. It's more than a Harry Potter book. And, <laughs> and more fictional than a Harry Potter book. But there are, believe it or not, some Republicans who who oppose this president. Uh, this is an ad produced by a group of conservative Republicans who support impeachment, and they're trying to make their case by um, showing us how it would be perfectly fine if we had a President Pence instead. Mike Pence doesn't brag about sexually assaulting women. Grab him by the to do anything. Mike Pence doesn't pressure foreign governments into investigating his political rivals. Ukraine should start an investigation into the Biden. Mike Pence doesn't mock and make fun of people with handicaps. You gotta see this guy. Oh, I don't know what I said. Oh. Mike Pence better hope Donald Trump doesn't see that commercial. <laughs> or Mike Pence is gonna have Donald Trump's foot up his oval orifice. Is it, <laughs> but, but I do love thinking about that. If some kind of miracle happens and these senators actually do the right thing for a change or move the president from office, which they won't, but if they did, I wonder what that would look like. Like, would they actually have to remove him physically from his office? What if he won't leave? Will they drag him out and put all his stuff in, uh, to the left, to the left? And, the, and where would... When that was happening, where would Mike Pence be? Would he be hiding in, the, like, the back of a van outside, <laughs> waiting for the coast to... Would there be hair pulling? Or cur I, I mean, don't you want to remove him just to see that? Come on, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so, the vice poodle was in Israel today, where he appeared to be on the receiving end of a royal snub courtesy of Prince Charles. 
that's the image we saw. And I guess Charles is in charge after all, huh? So after the video began to circulate, Pence's team claimed the reason they didn't shake hands there is because they'd already said hello backstage. And also, since they are the two whitest people in the world, there was some fear that by touching, they would cancel each other out. And see, so they didn't. You know, we don't... We really don't know... We don't know that much about Mike Pence. I just found out he has a brother named Greg last week. And... But if he becomes president, will know everything. Suddenly, he become the most talked about person in the country. And so to get a head start on that, we put together a video that illustrates beyond a reasonable doubt that Mike Pence, not only is he our vice president, he is also a world-class nose breather. I'm starting to get a whiff of desperation. Yeah, that's true. Uh, well, that's about it. More uh, bad news from Washington today. We're a group of scientists this morning advanced what is known as the doomsday clock. You know about this? this is a clock that reminds us of how close we are to annihilation. Today, the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists moves the hands of the doomsday clock. It is 100 seconds to midnight. And, oh, my God, someone stole three-quarters of the clock. <laughs> why, why, why is that the clock? Why don't they have a whole... It's more like a doomsday speedometer. And why it's still analog, I don't know. We know 126, you can even read it. It's time to, time to switch to doomsday digital. But we're now 100 seconds from midnight, which, in the 73 years they've been doing this, is the closest we've been to the end of the world. That's pretty scary stuff. That's supposed to wake us up when we see something. But the announcement was so boring. They didn't need... They had a black, like, thing on it. They really need to make this... Punch this up. Today, the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists moves the hands of the doomsday clock. It is 100 seconds to midnight. That's better, right? It feels like the end is near now. <laughs> These guys need help with this. If you want to raise awareness of the fact that we are on the verge of extinction. You have to do more. Like, why not make it a live television event? This Friday, it's the party we knew was coming. The crowd is ready. Dick Clark's Ryan Seacrest rocking Doomsday E with performances by Post Malone, Kelsey Ballerini, Kim Jong-un, Sierra, BTS, Dua Lipa, Dan and Shay, and that new deadly virus from China. As the clock strikes midnight, the ball drops on everyone. Dick Clark's Jenny McCarthy, Ryan Seacrest, rockin' Doomsday Eve, only on ABC. Followed by Bachelor in Hell. All right, well, sounds like that's a show. The Department of Transportation is cracking down on comfort animals. You know, these comfort animals everybody has now. They're proposing new rules that would ban all service animals on flights with the exception of dogs. So, sounds like my emotional support tarantula, Mr. Hairy Legs, <laughs> will not be joining us in Orlando this summer. But I am fine with this. Unless your name is Noah, you don't need to travel with a menagerie of animals on board. <laughs> I think if you want to bring a service animal on the plane, I think they have to literally be able to provide a service. Like, can your support pony make a Bloody Mary? Okay. <laughs> then he's in. Tell that cockatiel to grab me some peanuts on his way back. Dogs are different, though. You know, everything is so horrible lately. This constant barrage of accusations and lies. It's exhausting, and we're all tired of it. But once in a while, something wonderful comes along that reminds us that it's all going to be okay. And in this case, that something is Baby Yoda Dog. Right? <laughs> Instagram is fun, but nothing beats a live performance. And with that said, we've tracked him down. And ladies and gentlemen, we are delighted to bring you the viral sensation in person, Baby Yoda Dog. Wow. <laughs> Very cute, right? Now, hold on. Which one of you is Baby Yoda Dog? Him, Jimmy. Okay, all right. as a, as <laughs> Here, Baby Yoda. Yoda Dog, I have a treat for you. Look at that. Isn't that cute? 
It eats treats and everything. <laughs> All right, well, there you go. Thanks for making everyone happy again, Baby Yoda dog. I do want to say thanks to Road Dogs and Rescue.org for bringing Baby Yoda Dog here to brighten our lives again. I am Jimmy Kimmel. Give back this holiday season by my new book, The Serious Goose. I wrote it and illustrated it. All the money I make goes to children's hospitals across the country. So um, you know what to do.